this is my Bamboo Labs PS1 printer. Now, there's loads of videos about these on the internet, so what's the different about this one? Well, I've never used, I've never owned a 3D printer. Uh, I've no idea what I'm doing, so this should be interesting. Let's get going. Now, it started as these things do with the unpacking. Now, I must say this was really well wrapped with all that bubble wrap and protection. Uh, they also sent to you these three little spools, so that I got the AMS, so I got, I think it was an orange, a green, and then some kind of support material, which I guess is for sort of, well, support. Anyway, they tell you to keep the box just in case you need to send it back, so I put all the stuff in there. Uh, then it started this self-testing, so the motor started buzzing backwards and forwards and making funny noises. Hopefully that was all normal. Uh, once the table had lifted, I was able to remove some of this excess packaging material hoping it didn't come down on my hand, which it didn't. It only took a few minutes to finish all this self-testing and then it was happy and it was ready to go. Uh, so I thought, great, we can do our first print, but it asked me if I wanted to do a firmware update, which I thought, oh, that sounds like a good idea. And uh, you get the version numbers on the screen there. That took about 10, 15 minutes, I think, to run through and then we were ready to go. So what are we gonna print? Well, it's gonna have to be that benchy, isn't it? So I wasn't sure what colour it was going to use, but it seemed to be pulling from the first reel there and you saw that light was uh, flashing. Then I could see this green filament was going through that poop chute, I guess it's called. And then when it spat it out, uh, it didn't quite make it. You can see it's gone to the corner of the bed, so I managed to get my hand in there and just uh, flick that out of the way. Hopefully uh, it will behave a bit better in the future. And then it started touching the bed, which I guess is the auto levelling. So it kind of made sense, and then every now and again it would cut, yeah, do a little dance there. Uh, uh, comments down below then, what's it trying to do there? I don't know, testing the motors? Who knows? And then it would carry on every, I don't know, 50 mil or so, I guess mapping out the surface so when it's printing it can uh, um, accommodate that. And then it did that strip at the front, which I guess is purging. I don't know what you call that officially, but anyway, it did that. And then here we go, and the first thing you notice is I've never owned or used one of these, obviously I've seen them on YouTube, seen them go, but to actually see it first hand, just how fast that's going, I mean, that, that's real time there, and the table it was on was shaking a bit, um, but yeah, it's really, really going for it, and it's also fascinating to see all these different layers, I guess each little line is one line of G-code, so thousands of lines. Uh, I'd also got the software hooked up, and you can see the refresh rate uh, is quite slow when it goes over the, you know, back to your computer. Um, but I guess you're just looking to see if it's tangled or uh, messed up or whatever. I believe the X1C is a bit faster, but for me, all I need to do is make sure it's okay. And at the moment, I'm sat right next to it anyway. And here we are going on to the cabin, uh, whatever you call that, or the crew cab. Now it's got a slightly sloped roof, which I guess is one of the tests, just to look at the kind of layers. In fact, I did a bit of reading about this, and the whole the whole idea of it is it's designed to test overhangs and uh, you know, make the printer work and just uh, show you what it can do. And then, uh, yeah, it finished printing that, and then finally it went on to, I guess you'd call it, a little chimney. Uh, yeah, I did notice the feed tube uh, was rubbing against the glass top there, and I did have a look online, and people had said, uh, yeah, it can do that and rub it. And there is a little guide thing you can print that would help that, so maybe that would be next up. Finishing the little chimney. It's great watching it go round and round those little circles and just squeezing out the filament. And then it cleaned the nozzle. And I think we are we done. I think we were done. So then it started purging some of the filament. You can just see it at the back there. Uh, and then uh, I don't know if I caught it on camera or not. But then it kind of cuts across it and cleans it and throws it out the back. And then it lowers the table, and there it is. So you've got that little green strip at the front where it purges itself, and uh, there's a little benchy. Now my daughter tried to just pull it off the bed there. This is that new gold bed, whatever that's called, and yeah, it's reasonably well stuck. Um, she was a bit worried she was going to break it, so I had a go and yeah, a bit of leverage, and off we went. Um, I guess you can take the bill plate out, sort of flex it, and help relieve that. Someone also said hairspray might help, so really pleased, it's amazing. Now of course being a boat, um, the logical thing I don't want to do is find out if it floats, and the answer is no. Poor Benchy. So 
So encouraged by that success, I had a look at the other built-in files and I got this kind of scraper. I think this took about an hour to print, but again, pretty quick and two colors there. So that was quite nice. I think this is the holder that it clips into. And then for the scrape itself, I ended up taking the plate out and kind of flexing it. And there we go. There's our little benchy and a few little tools that you get with it. And our scraper. Really, really impressed. I'm really looking forward to using this. Okay, I think it's time to make something. So long time viewers will know I'm in the process of upgrading this drill press and I've just added DRO uh, to the knee. And what I need is some kind of bracket to hold the micro switches in place so it can trip when it goes too high or too low. So I've got two of these and they need to kind of wrap around the L-shaped angle section there but be adjustable with that thumb screw, the yellow part there. So I need one at the top and one for the bottom trip switch and that will give me my limits. So I exported it as STL into this Bamdu Studio. The only thing I did is change the number of wall loops to three because I'm going to be using these heated inserts. I read somewhere it was a good idea. <laughs> I don't know. Let's see. And then uh, here we are just looking at... Uh, oh, zoom the wrong way. So I'm still getting used to this software. Uh, if you zoom in now, we should be able to see all the different layers, especially when you go around those holes there. So hopefully we can see... If I just zoom in a little bit... We can see we've actually got three layers around those. So when I push those inserts in, they've got a little bit more material. There we go, yeah. So three lines there. Uh, so there'll be a five mil insert on that main hole there. That will be a kind of brass thumb, uh, thumb screw. And then the other little ones there are for the micro switch. And look how much code you need. What's that? 41,000 lines. Wow, just for that little part. All right. Uh, and it, I think it's 3 meters and about 10 grams and 0.25, I don't know how you adjust the cost, there must be some parameters to turn it into pounds, it's currency in the UK, so uh, yeah, send it to the printer and off we go. Now I've got this hooked up to the network so it arrived pretty much instantly and now it's heating up the bed, I think the one on the right there, up to 55, just giving it a gentle warm and then the nozzle's just coming up to temperature, I think then it did a cleaning cycle. Uh, it's just got to purge out because it would have had the green in before. So did this little thing there where it's dropping out the last bit of the green, and then it slowly transitions into the grey. Uh, I wanted black really, but they were sold out. As there's lots of the filament was sold out actually, even from the main store and other stores. Anyway, we'll have a bit of a test run with this. So that's a uh, little poop out the back. And then I think it did the uh, auto leveling. There was a bit of purging or something off to the right there. And then here's our first layer, and away we go. Um, I know I've never used the machine before. I've sort of seen them, but to see it in person, just how fast it is at some of these operations, it really is amazing. You know, and it keeps that accuracy as well. Uh, I guess the first layer, which is what this one is, is a little bit slower. But once it gets into it, the whole table is shaking. Maybe we need to upgrade the table. Oh, here we go. Look at that. Right. Just going for it. Um, and at the end, I didn't uh, on a part like this. I wouldn't say I sacrificed any kind of quality um, for what I need. It's a very functional part. Yeah, very pleased. All right, in we go. And it looks like it's putting a reasonable amount of infill in there, although I guess that's the bottom layer, isn't it? So let's make sure we've got nice solid skin. Okay, here we go. That's going up the walls. So I think the whole part was about 20 minutes, which is, again, amazing. And the little light flashes on there to tell you which reel it's coming out of. This is number one. Now, I didn't add swap the orders, so I actually swapped the filament to put the grey into number one. I think now I've realised when you print it, you can actually select which of the four you want, so uh, that's nice. Um, if you look at the actual uh, camera, if you like, it's only every uh, few seconds you get an update, but at least it shows you if it's uh, working or not, so that's what you get at your computer, or you can do a similar one on your phone as well. Uh, the fan was surprisingly noisy, now I've sort of got used to what it does. I think it's this fan which is cooling the part. I don't know if there's a fan on the nozzle itself, a little round black sort of disc there, I couldn't quite tell. Um, yeah, I'm sure someone's had a go at quieting those. Anyway, here we go, we're about halfway through. And some of the infill, you start to see the shape there, it kind of wraps around the L shape of the extrusion. Uh, and then there's a little hole there. Uh, yeah, five minutes to go. Yeah, the hole there is for the brass insert for the 5mm thumb screw. And then I think it's the final layer, or nearly really going for it and you can see the two little holes there for the micro switch now I've realized the one micro switch is upside down from the other so I need four holes and then I'm just going to use two of those in on which orientation but this is a bit of a prototype first let's see if it fits and so on 
I guess that's the beauty of 3D printing. You, know, you try a sample part, what was this out in 15, 20 minutes? Doesn't fit, make some modifications and go again. Yeah, I'm really impressed, so I think this is the, is this the top layers. Oh, yeah, oh, it's done, I think. Yep, it's done at this point. Cleaning itself, and is it going to purge that? Oh, okay. oh, yeah, so it winds that back in again. It's quite nice. And then it lowers it down like uh, like a waiter saying, your food is ready, sir. Uh, I've read somewhere hairspray is a good idea. I'll have to get some, maybe try that. Although this gold plate does seem to be removing quite well from that. And there it is off the printer. It's a little bit filleted, I guess, around the radiuses. But maybe you can adjust that in software. Yeah, there's a nice round hole. Nice texture from the plate there, quite like that. Yeah, and uh, a surprisingly stiff part. I mean, there's quite a lot of difference in strength in that. Very functional. So there we go. Uh, all this set up, networked, everything done, printed all out and designed apart all in one day. I'm really impressed uh, how easy it is just print and go. Very happy. Now I've got no baseline, I've got nothing to compare it to. I've never done 3D printing before. I've seen it on YouTube, that's about it. But if this is the standard of the new printing systems, wow, what a world we live in. What an amazing machine. Thank you for watching.